Welcome back, I'm the Watch Nerd. On this video, we're gonna be going into my experience at Nashville, um, Tennessee. Very cool place, awesome people, and we're gonna talk about my watch story. I was there for about five days. Of course, I go into the boutiques. I, I always am thinking about watches, even when I'm on vacation. Uh, before I do get into it though, I want to keep announcing my Chanel chain giveaway. If you do want to be entered, there's the four steps in the description below. Okay, so I was recently out on a trip. I, it was a beautiful place, uh, Tennessee of course, and uh, I want to just quickly talk about my watch stories. Uh, more laid back video. Recently I've been uploading, uh, of course, reviews. Uh, I did those pre in advance before my on vacation so that's why you saw them every pretty much every two days I've been uploading um, so well what is the, the whole video basically just what I've experienced um, there and really you know experiences everywhere so um, I was staying at the Gaylord Marriott there it is the biggest hotel without a casino in the United States it was very cool and the first day I was there, I was walking and seeing this massive, massive hotel. A couple asked me, it was actually a family, if I could take a picture for them. And I said, sure, why not? Um, I took the picture and uh, the guy was wearing a Speedmaster Omega. And it was a genuine piece, I saw it. You know, it wasn't uh, a fake because you'll be pretty surprised. And I go, oh, what a great Speedmaster. He says, excuse me? I'm like, oh, your watch. And he's like, Oh yeah, thank you. I looked at a few different ones and uh, he had the chronograph running. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know what the chronograph is. I'm 90% um, sure because he didn't like, he didn't seem like he did. And uh, it was, it was kind of a weird experience because most people, um, well, this is what the community thinks at least. Uh, people that own Omega know what it is. They know the, the complications, they know uh, whatever, you know, it is, right? They know what it is. They say people buy Rolex just for the name. They buy it for the flash, they buy it for this. They don't really know what the complication is, what the movement is, what the, whatever, the beats per hour, whatever the case may be. Um, and this really shook me because I'm like, wow, you know, how wrong is the watch community in certain situations? Because Yes, there might be more people that own a Rolex and don't know what it means versus Omega, but they're still out there. There's people that own Omega and don't know what the complications are and don't know any of the history. He didn't know about the whole space thing at all. It was kind of crazy. Um, so that was the first day. Later on, uh, there was two boutiques I uh, went to at the mall. There was uh, Omega. I walked in. I had a long conversation talking about of course, you know, certain things that I would like them to change. It was kind of funny, like me coming in and saying, oh, the Seamaster 300 really isn't a timeless design. I wish you would not have skeleton hands. Uh, helium escape valve is pretty ugly. Uh, just think about the Submariner if they had one. Like I, I didn't say it in that way, but I kind of said it in that way. Um, and they were having, you know, some fun. Of course, the first thing that happened though, uh, well, actually about halfway through, she says, wow, what a nice watch. Uh, she says, it's the only watch you ever need. And I, I, the Rolex, of course. Um, and the guy, the manager was in the back kind of listening, you know, he was doing his own thing. He wasn't in the back of the store, but he was in the cases. And when she said that, he says, oh, he comes over. Now he comes over. I, I believe he's the manager of the boutique. And he comes to me, he says, do you like the Speedmaster? I said, I love the Omega Speedmaster. And he says, oh, uh, let me get you something. So he goes in and he grabs a book. I'll, I'll take a picture of the book. And uh, I, now I put it in my collection. Uh, but he says, it's yours for free. Um, I will tell you, Omega Direct Boutiques will never do that. They'll never give you a free book like that. Because um, this is not their regular book. This is not their like a free one. Rolex has a free book. Uh, Rolex only has one book, if I'm pretty sure, right? Unless you're an official dealer that you have a bunch of books. But yeah, so Rolex has um, that. But Omega has a bunch of books you can buy. I don't know why. I don't think they're, you know, they're kind of turning into a bookstore, not gonna lie. Um, with all their accessories, it's kind of pushing the brand down. I don't know. It's more of a, I, 
Omega's beautiful brand, but no, there are some things. But that, let's put that aside. So he gives me the book. I'm very thankful, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I leave. And then I'm like, wow, what a difference between me just walking into a boutique without a watch on, right? If I didn't have a watch on, I don't think they would talk as much to me. I'm just, the, the, uh, so I said, okay, let's put it to the test. So then I went to a Breitling. And I walked into Breitling and they, they were not as subtle as Omega. Um, I walked in and I was talking to the guy, whatever. And immediately, you know, I'm looking at this showcase. I believe it was at the uh, emergency. And the guy's staring, staring at my wrist. My watch was here, this is my Oyster Perpetual. And he couldn't see the dial. So he wanted to see if I had money, basically. I think this is what it was. And then I, I look at him, he's staring at my watch. Then I look down at like where he's looking and I see my watch and then I look up. A very awkward moment, right? Cause you should never ever do that. If you're watching this and you're in a boutique, like uh, working at a boutique, never judge a person uh, by their watch. I know people that are very, very wealthy that wear an SKX all the time. And they have Submariners in their collection, but they still wear the SKX. So it doesn't matter what they're wearing, a person. Um, truly treat everybody equally. You don't know who's coming in your door. So I was like, wow, um, really shocked me. And, I, and then I looked around. Breitling has just gone insane with their prices, especially at retail. Uh, it's kind of insane. And uh, a lot of the people didn't know what they were really talking about. In my opinion, it was Watches of Switzerland owned this particular one. Um, the other one, it was owned by somebody. I, I'm not sure, the Omega. It wasn't a direct boutique. Um, so then later on, I then a few days later, because Rolex was closed that day. So I think on Tuesday, we went back to the mall um, and I walked into the Rolex store. They also carry Cartier and Hermes. Uh, but I walked in, everything was gone. It was basically Vegas. Um, there was a few women's watches and I go over and the manager sees me. He's, I'm wearing it, of course, he always perpetually says, oh, he didn't even say really much, but um, he was standing there and, uh, you know, I said uh, my uh, friend, because I was with somebody, um, wanted to buy a, a Datejust 41. Is that possible? He acted like a Datejust 41 was acting, acting like a Submariner, right? The Datejust 41, in my opinion, should trade under retail uh well not under but at. like i would never ever pay a dime over retail for a piece like that including uh you know the wimbledon but that's me maybe the wimbledon you know deserves a little more credit but um he acted like i said any date just it doesn't matter what it is doesn't matter if it's fluted or if it's uh smooth whatever the the combination but it had to be stainless steel she didn't want to spend you know crazy amount but it had to be steel he goes yeah good luck uh, basically to me and then she goes to Cartier uh, all in the same boutique and then she was like right away she says how much is that uh, blonde blue if I, I'm not pronouncing that correctly uh, it was the round one and she was gonna pay 6500 I said listen I uh, take a breather make sure you really want this piece because you know you don't want to make a mistake and um, I, I think she's gonna hold on uh, this particular person to for the date chest 41, which I would do too. Um, but it was kind of insane. And then later I went to the Louis Vuitton store um, and I uh, was looking around cause all, all, everything's hot right now. Um, and the first thing the guy says, wow, I love your Rolex. It is just gorgeous like that. So I think if I didn't wear this time, particular timepiece, I would have never gotten the customer service I had gotten from what four stores the Rolex store no the Rolex store didn't get, didn't care at all what I was wearing I could have been wearing a Daytona ceramic they wouldn't care um they're very they think they're uh you know above most of the brands which they are I mean in in this time but you know treat everybody the same and I think um these other brands did not uh I, I told Omega, I mean, Breitling, I said, wow, um, I cannot believe you sell watches. Basic, I, I didn't say it in this way that I'm talking to you, but I meant it like this. And I think they kind of understood. Uh, the guy goes like, the emergency was $21,000. I said, you 
I, I, I said, what do you sell it at like a 50% discount? And I said, well, what is this number? Like I said, how do you sell these watches? Basically I said it like that. Um, so it was kind of crazy, but you know, they didn't kick me out. They didn't say, oh, it's this and that. They couldn't even come up with a reason. I think they're very, very expensive, right? Like at retail, but that also gives us a great opportunity on the gray market. I'm rambling on here. It was a cool, fun trip. Everything else was pretty fun. It was just sort of crazy with these watches. Um, I would love to know everything down in the comments below. What do you think about me wearing my Oyster Perpetual and the way people reacted? I would love to hear all of that. I wanna thank you all, and I will definitely catch you in the next one. Have a fantastic day.